Kelly Moore Paints has announced an immediate shutdown, marking the end of a significant portion of its business operations. Today, let's discuss the closing of 70-year-old Kelly Moore Paints, the company which has faced numerous asbestos litigation claims and inherited substantial legal liabilities, including unpaid taxes, has been unable to sustain its operations. With over 150 stores across California, Texas, Oklahoma, and Nevada, the 78-year-old paint manufacturer was acquired by an investment firm in late 2022, prompting a relocation of its headquarters to Texas. Facing financial challenges, the company furloughed around 700 employees and ceased operations at its manufacturing facility. Kelly Moore intends to fulfill existing orders using inventory from its distribution facility in Union City, California. Despite engaging in discussions with potential investors, the company was unable to secure any commitments. Over the past two decades, Kelly Moore has paid approximately $600 million to settle asbestos claims, with an additional $170 million in potential future liabilities. BusinessWire reported that despite exploring various options, the company concluded that neither bankruptcy, reorganization, nor in-court liquidation were viable due to insufficient funds and lack of assets for creditors. The company attributes its inability to attract funding or interest to its persistent burden of asbestos litigations. CEO Charles Gassenheimer expressed disappointment and sadness over the outcome, emphasizing the team's efforts to innovate and serve professional painting contractors. Despite challenging circumstances, the decision to terminate operations was deemed the only viable alternative after evaluating evaluating all possible options. Gasheimer extended sympathy to employees, customers, industry partners, and the communities that have supported Kelly Moore throughout its history. Kelly Moore Paints has promptly shuttered its retail outlets and production facilities, including the 330,000 square foot plant in Hearst, inaugurated in 2017. The company's strategy involved fulfilling as many customer orders as possible using the inventory housed at its distribution facility in Union City, California. In the wake of the closure, employees will be compensated for their working hours, and the company is committed to pursuing outstanding payments to address accrued benefits like paid time off. CEO Charles Gassenheimer acknowledged the substantial financial risk undertaken by the owners in the 2022 acquisition. Despite their commendable efforts to revive the struggling business, unforeseen challenges proved insurmountable, leading to their decision to exit the enterprise. The acquisition was orchestrated by Miami-based investment firm Flax Group in late 2022, when Kelly Moore boasted $400 million in annual revenue and a workforce of 1,200 employees. The company operated through 157 company managed stores and resellers. A notable move post-acquisition was the relocation of the headquarters from San Carlos, California to Irving. Gassenheimer had expressed aspirations of growing the revenue to the range of $800 million to $1 billion. For years, the paint manufacturer has been embroiled in legal battles regarding the use of asbestos in its cement and texture products, practices that were banned in 1981. The financial toll from settling asbestos-related claims has exceeded $600 million, with an estimated additional liability of $170 million for future cases. The company's announcement highlighted the cumulative impact of legal settlements, ongoing litigation cost and challenges in reinvesting in the business, exacerbated by supply chain issues intensified by the recent pandemic. Amid this backdrop, Clayton Tagginson, a store manager with 33 years of experience, learned of his job loss via email, expressing relief at having clarity and the opportunity to seek alternative employment. Tagginson and colleagues had suspicion about the company's financial health, particularly due to limited inventory in their store. The lack of information from higher ups added to the uncertainty. Despite relocating to Texas with the goal of revitalizing the business through supply chain improvements, technology upgrades, and resolving asbestos claims, the company's efforts fell short. The move was intended to attract investors and acquirers, but the burden of ongoing asbestos litigation thwarted those plans. CEO Charles Gassenheimer expressed disappointment and sympathy for employees, customers, industry partners, and communities, acknowledging the collective support throughout Kelly Moore's lengthy history. The driving force behind Kelly Moore was its co-founder, William E. Moore, who hailed from Hartford, Arkansas, and who was the son of a barber. Demonstrating ambition from an early age, Moore began shining shoes at the age of nine to fund his college education. A significant aspect of his early life was learning tennis on an improvised court in front of his home. Upon commencing his studies at Georgia Tech in 1934, Moore's tennis skills were noteworthy enough to earn him a scholarship as a walk-on. Despite this, he still needed financial support and held eight concurrent on jobs throughout his college years, all while maintaining high academic performance and achieving athletic success. Moore's exceptional accomplishments made him a local legend. Graduating in 1938 with dual degrees in industry management and chemical engineering, Moore entered the job market during the Great Depression. He accepted a position as a salesman at National Theater Supply, earning $110 per month, a substantial decrease from his $150 per month he had managed to accumulate from his part-time college jobs. Moore then secured employment at Glidden Payne, initially receiving a $160 per month draw. Settling a goal to reach $1,000 per month, he implemented a systematic strategy 
strategy by analyzing sales data. Recognizing that 20% of his customers contributed to 80% of his sales, Moore decided to return smaller accounts to the company and concentrate on the top 20%. This approach allowed him to achieve his target income within the first year, eventually making him Glidden's leading West Coast producer. Moore's trajectory in the business world faced a pause during World War II when he served in the Navy on the Pacific Destroyer. Although his time at Glidden affirmed his passion for the paint industry, the war experience left him feeling he had fallen behind schedule in life. This fueled his ambition. After the war, Moore, now 29 and newly married, decided to venture into the paint business. Despite the setback, he dedicated his spare time in the Navy to study two books on paint making. In 1946, he embarked on his entrepreneurial journey, targeting the Southern California market. After analyzing the region, he identified San Carlos, situated in what would later become Silicon Valley, as an optimal location for his venture. At that time, San Carlos was transitioning from orchards to residential communities. Using savings from his Glidden stint and wisely investing funds in Tulsa, Oklahoma real estate, Moore secured the seed money needed for a single store and manufacturing facility. To bring his vision to life, Moore sought a partner skilled in paint mixing, leading him to William H. Kelly, a retired Glidden superintendent eager to start a small factory. Their plan involved morning paint mixing and afternoon deliveries, with the expectation of a $500 monthly profit. However, they underestimated the post-war housing demand, triggering an unforeseen building boom. In the initial six months, Kelly Moore, instead of projecting $3,000 in profit, achieved a remarkable $30,000. Kelly Moore's prosperity went beyond mere fortune timing. It was shaped significantly by Moore's strategic decisions and innovations that propelled future business growth. Moore consciously targeted the tracked home paint contractors, a market segment overlooked by national brands fixated on consumer sales. Recognizing the specific needs of contractors, Kelly Moore developed a high-quality paint that could efficiently complete the job with a single coat. The company also prioritized maintaining substantial inventory levels to meet the demands of contractors. As the business expanded, Kelly Moore distinguished itself by opening larger-than-average stores, essentially serving as warehouses for paint contractors who operated from their homes and lacked the space to store significant paint quantities. Notably, Kelly Moore pioneered the integration of credit as sales function, treating customers as partners. The company differentiated itself further by introducing innovative customer service practices, such as early opening hours with complimentary coffee, a seemingly small gesture that held significant value for paint contractors accustomed to lengthy, exhausting workdays. Additionally, Kelly Moore led the industry by being the first to own a fleet of trucks for efficient delivery service. Ultimately, the success of Kelly Moore rested on Moore's character, characterized by a dedication to honest business practices and a commitment to producing high-quality products supported by exceptional customer service, fostering repeat business. In 1952, Moore acquired full ownership of Kelly Moore by buying out his partner, yet he retained the partner's name as the business expanded beyond Northern California. The undeniable success of Kelly Moore was intricately tied to the integrity, skills, and hands-on leadership of Bill Moore. Actively engaged in all aspects of the business, Moore played a pivotal role in developing manufacturing techniques and designing company-owned stores. A key factor in the company's success was Moore's astute selection of real estate, strategically establishing stores in locations with reasonable rental rates. This approach contributed to the business achieving high margins. Operating larger stores that doubled as warehouses allowed Kelly Moore to effect effectively plan inventories resulting in robust net margins. While industry giants like Glidian and Sherwin-Williams were generating profits around 2.5%, Kelly Moore surpassed them, achieving a net profit exceeding 10% of sales by the mid-1980s. That's all about today's video. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, press the bell icon to get notified of our upcoming videos. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below.